Quixotic Dragon asked, Not sure how you would implement segregation in a positive way. What do you mean? And I had to watch the video a couple times to try to figure out what you meant by this question, but um, I don't mean that it can actually be implemented in a positive way. I'm saying that it could have some positive effects. Some things that we don't really give much thought. Um, and I look at this and I see the positive things, but I still end up tilting towards the other side. Um, but basically it would be no longer trying to enforce a non-segregation kind of mindset. I mean, we've been doing that this for quite a while. Trying to make sure that things don't get too segregated. Um, and we do this within uh, a number of... Uh, we don't do it to all the communities, but we do definitely do it to a set number of communities. And... Oh, it's too much like this. We need to we need to change that. I mean, there there is like gentrification that happens, uh, and it hurts a lot of people. Um, but yeah, if we if we stopped attempting to uh, curb uh, segregation, uh, and we got rid of the anti-discrimination policies that we do now, so anyone can discriminate against anything they want. Um, some of the positive things of that would be when when a business is able to have a workforce that is more cohesive and genuinely gets along and genuinely isn't constantly worried about, am I going to offend this person? Oh, do I need to take another uh, diversity course? Do I need to take another, I mean, all this stuff that, that's starting to be required by businesses because they don't want to get sued. Um, I mean, there are very little, there, there are very few workforces anymore where people are actually comfortable at work, where they're happy to go to work. I mean, they exist, they do exist, but it's not very common. Most people hate their jobs, and most people have some worry in their mind that they're going to say something that might offend someone. Um, and the more that we try to enforce this homogenized way of doing things, uh, the more often we're going to have to worry about someone getting offended. You know, there could be someone that's doing a really poor, a really, really shitty job, but the employer is like, well, if I fire this person, they could bring up a card and, uh sue them and they're like well I, I don't want to chance that so they end up keeping someone who, who, who does a shitty job because they're worried about getting sued if they were to fire the person even though the person is doing a poor job you know um, this stuff happens it can happen in all directions um, so Another question I, I've got is, you know, why would someone want to work somewhere that people don't treat you well or people uh, you know, look at you poorly just for the demographic you happen to fit? Why would you want to work somewhere like that? Oh, we need to force them to think this way. Really? See, there, there's another thing right there. You know, people would be more free to believe how they want People would be more free to be themselves. Um, there, there would be gay businesses, black businesses, um, all female businesses, you know, uh, businesses that only have people of a particular demographic. And, you know, a positive way that we could implement this would be for the first several years, maybe like 10 years or something like that. We put, we, we, we give people a chance, an extra chance for like 10 years. And in any of the neighborhoods that, or communities, I should, I should say too, that normally really, really struggle getting their own businesses afloat, 
um, we could give them extra help, and we could we could offer them classes on you know on business, so they could get a little bit more of an idea of of, of of, and I don't mean the social side of business. I mean the you know the hard business side of business. So, um, so they have more of a chance. Um, that and some people will will scream bloody murder over the oh well you're you're you know that's not equal. Well, if if we're to switch to something like segregation, we would need something in in place to help people out. Uh, you know, and and like I said, it should be on you know a, a finite length of time. So, um, but if you know, what's that saying? If you uh, you can give people some fish, and it'll feed them for a day, but if you teach them how to fish, it will, you know, uh, help them for life. And if we can help people um, and communities start their own businesses. Um, we could go start going more back towards um, independent businesses instead of all these big conglomerates that we've got going on. Now that's another thing too is that some some of what is making all this the, the big businesses uh, taking over everything is they can absorb the cost of lawsuits. And I I know it, it might sound like I'm being extreme on this, but this shit's expensive. This this shit destroys businesses sometimes, and you know it's debatable as to whether or not these businesses des- deserve to be destroyed. But you know, I I, I think it's strange how how like I look at the Chick Fil A thing. It, and how people are like, well, they have this opinion, so we need to boycott them. How dare you go to that business? You, how could you go there? They're, they're anti-gay. And I'm like, um, every one of them, well, I've only been in one, so I can't say every one of them. But, uh, well, there was one that I was in when I was in Georgia. Uh, one of the workers there was obviously, obviously gay. There's someone here, in, one in Tacoma, who is obviously gay. Um, they have no problem with with gay people as far as that goes. They just held a certain opinion. Oh no, it got out. Oh, you you're you're terrible. We need to boycott. You know the fact that we live in that kind of society. Um, I just I just think about how different workplaces were in the early '90s compared to when you got to around 2004. I mean, just how much different workplaces became at that point. So, the workplace has changed a lot. And it's filled with worry. And when you have that worry on your mind all the time, how the fuck are you supposed to get any decent amount of work done? And, as crazy as this may sound, I think uh, the fact that there's all these worries is one of the driving forces as to why so many businesses have put their uh, production uh, places uh, offshore. You know, well, not only are they not going to have to pay as much money, but they don't have to deal with this shit anymore. So, and to some of you, I'm being like totally, oh, how can you say that? Oh, look, I don't, I don't like to deny the way that businesses run. And what is important to a person starting a business? What what do you have to think about? And what are all the factors? And those things that that have happened to uh, places of business has 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 changed quite a bit. When did people have to? Oh, I have to take a diversity course. Really? You know, it, it, it it's the ultimate, really in the big brother is watching you mentality. You know, it, it's one step away from uh, saying, well, you can't think that way. Then people get home, they want to veg out, and now they're bombarded with more messages that shove that continue this status quo of 
the same crap they put up with when they're at work. But, you know, you just keep pushing on, you just keep doing it, and, you know, all will be well eventually, even though life gets shittier as you get older, right? A lot older, I should say. You have a lot of good years, but there's a certain point where it, it, it doesn't become so great. So, um, and I don't believe I'm there yet. I, I, I've got quite a, quite a few more years before I have to worry about that, at least statistically anyway. You never know what could happen, right? So, you know, there are all those things. All those things would be positive if we, if we got out of this current system we've got now. And uh, freedom of speech, a feeling like we have freedom of speech would be restored for sure. Um, but I mean, one of the things that, that we, we're having to look at is so many people make it sound like we've come so far when it comes to racism and, and sexism and da 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 da. We haven't. We've barely even moved on it. We're we're not really that much different than we were in the mid '60s. It's just been sort of covered up better, you know. So there may be a point where we just have to go. Well, people have the beliefs they have. People are going to live the way that they live. Now here it is. This whole time I'm propping this up, but I don't really fully buy into it. At least not yet. Maybe I will in the future. But I don't right now. I still think that there could be a better answer than that. Uh, but if we end up seeing that that's really the best answer, then I'll go with that too. Um, so, I mean, I see, I see a lot of the negative things about the way that we're currently doing things. You know, how many more things are we going to have to add to non-discrimination policies? What is going to be considered discrimination? What is going to be considered harassment? What is going to be considered uh, 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 offending someone? What's going to offend someone next? How much more extreme are our diversity classes going to get? Um, and it just continues to build. You've got that, uh, what is that called, the Overton window? Um it just keeps becoming more and more and more. They, it's, it's this system that says uh, that basically shoves forth that uh, unless you're practically praising the minority and chastising the majority, then then you're a piece of shit. And I just can't see that lasting that long. I can't see that kind of mindset lasting that long. So, I see us going in the direction of segregation. So, I guess there's a part of me that's trying to hype, thing, hype myself up to prepare for something like that if it occurs. Because to go to that kind of system is almost instant. And there isn't that much to, to have to continue to modify about it. But the way that things are now, it's constantly in modification. Well, we need to change this now, and now we need to change this to add more more exceptions, and let's add more exceptions, and more exceptions, and more exceptions, and more... I mean, it'll never end. So, you know, this other system, it would it could be implemented almost instantly, and it only has to be implemented once. There will be, I mean, as far as the main meat and potatoes, there will be some things added to it, of course, and there's also the things that I talked about where, you know, we, hey, if we, if we switch to something that, like this, then we should help the communities try to start their own businesses. So maybe I'm like really, really left field here, but, you know, oh, well. <laughs> so if you wanted to know the, the, the positive things that could, could come out of, of a segregative uh, type of uh, 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 approach, that would be it. Um... You know, I mean, I miss the gay business districts, uh, and that sort of thing just over time has sort of gotten cracked down on. Um, whether it's social pressure, whether it's the laws, um, you know, I, I'd like to think that most of it is because we've become more open-minded, 
and are just accepting more people, but that might not really be the, the biggest factor. So, but who knows? Who knows?